Welcome to our radiographic anatomy seminar about the anterior abdominal wall and the esophagus. This seminar is supervised by dear Dr. Rahat Tawfiq and Dr. Mohammed Abbott. Many thanks to them. And it is prepared, designed, and will be presented by me, Umid Rahman Ali. First, we will start with anterior abdominal wall. The anterior abdominal wall forms the anterior limit of the abdominal viscera. It extends from the xiphoid process and costal margins cranially to the pubic and iliac bones inferiorly and to the mid axillary line on, uh, on either side. Functions of the anterior abdominal wall, it protects the abdominal viscera, assists in forceful expiration, decreases risk of herniation, enables the trunk to bend forward or laterally. Planes of the anterior abdominal, abdominal wall, there are transverse and uh, vertical abdominal lines. The transverse abdominal plane, subcostal plane, passes through the 10th costal cartilage, lies at the level of the inferior border of the L3 vertebral body. The transtubercular plane lies midway between the transpyloric plane and the pubic symphysis, pass through the iliac tubercles and the L5 vertebral body. Transpyloric plane passes through the ninth costal cartilage and lies at the level of the inferior border of the L1 vertebral body. Vertical abdominal lines, the right and left midclavicular lines that extend from the midpoint of the clavicle cranially and to the mid inguinal point caudally. The components of the anterior abdominal wall, from superficial to deep skin, the superficial fatty layer of subcutaneous tissue and the deep membranous layer of uh, which is called scarpus fascia, then the external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, transversus abdominis muscle, then the deep fascia and preperitoneal adipose tissue and the parietal peritoneum. The superficial fascia, it is divided into superficial fatty layer, campus fascia, and deep membranous layer, scarpus fascia. Superficial layer, campus fascia, it's continuous with the superficial fat over the rest of the body. And the scrotum is modified as a thin, smooth muscular layer called dartos muscle. Deep membranous layer, scarpus fascia, superiorly it is continuous with the superficial fascia over the remainder of the trunk. In the midline, it is adherent to the linea alba and symphysis pubis. Inferiorly, it fused with the iliac crest, the fascia lata at the inguinal flexure, and it extends on the scrotum. It becomes continuous with the membranous layer of superficial fascia of the perineum colis fascia. The musculature of the anterior abdominal wall, it's composed of five muscles, anterolaterally three flat muscles, including the external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, transversus abdominis. In the midline, there are two vertical muscles, the rectus abdominis and the pyramidalis. External oblique muscle, it is the largest abdominal muscle and the most superficial anterolateral, uh, in an uh, uh, anterior lateral muscle, its fibers are oriented in an inferomedial direction. It's originated from the lower ribs and inserted from uh, 5 to 12 and inserted to the linea alba, pubic crest, and inguinal ligament and iliac crest. Internal oblique muscle lies deep to the external oblique. Its fibers are oriented superior, medial, medially, originated from the lumbar fascia, the iliac crest, and the lateral two-thirds of the inguinal ligament, and it's inserted into the linea alba and the costal margins. The transversus abdominis muscle, the deepest muscle of the anterior lateral abdominal wall, its fibers are oriented transversely, it's originated from the lower ribs interdigitating with the diaphragm, the lumbar fascia, the iliac crest, and the lateral half of the inguinal ligament. 
let's insert it into the linear alba. Rectus abdominis, paired muscles on either side of the linear alba, subdivided by tendinous intersections, resulting in several muscle bellies. It's originated from the symphysis pubis and pubic crest and inserted into the xiphoid process and fifth to seventh ribs. Pyramidalis muscle, small triangular muscle, absent in 10 to 25% of the population. It's originated from the pubic symphysis and pubic crest and inserted into the linea alba. The rectal sheath is a sheath formed by the fusion of the aponeurosis of flat muscles, the external, internal oblique, and uh, transversus abdominis, which encloses the vertical muscles, the rectus abdominis, and the pyramidalis muscle. Above the arcuate line, the anterior la layer of the rectus sheath is composed of the external oblique aponeurosis and the anterior lamina of the internal oblique while uh, posterior layer is composed of the transversus abdominis aponeurosis and the posterior lamina of the internal oblique aponeurosis. Below the arcuate line, only the anterior la layer of the rectus sheath is present. And uh, it's composed of the aponeurosis of the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis muscles. At the arcuate line, the transversus abdominis aponeurosis and the posterior lamina of the internal oblique aponeurosis pass anterior to the rectus muscle. Thus, the lower one third of the rectus muscle is in direct contact with the peritoneum. Regarding the vasculature of the anterior abdominal wall, arterial supply, the muscles and associated soft tissues supplied by branches of the superior epigastric, subcostal and interior epigastric arteries and their cutaneous branches above the umbilicus. Arterial supply below the umbilicus is from superficial epigastric arteries, superficial circumflex iliac arteries, and superficial external pudendal arteries. Venous drainage, superficial veins are paired with uh, the arteries. Veins above the umbilicus drain into the azygous system and below the umbilicus into the femoral system via the great saphenous vein. Lymphatics and innervation, lymphatic drainage Above the umbilicus drain into the axillary and sternal nodes. The vessels below the umbilicus drain into the superficial inguinal nodes. Innervation derived from the ventral rami of T7 through L1, thoracoabdominal nerves from the ventral rami of T7 to T11, subcostal nerves from the ventral rami of the T12, ventral rami of the L1 nerve roots give rise to iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves. Regarding the inguinal canal, it is an oblique passage in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall, situated above the medial half of the inguinal ligament. It's about four to six cm long. It's partly formed by the muscles and facial layers of the anterior abdominal wall. It extends between the deep internal and superficial external inguinal rings. It contains the ilioinguinal nerve and in males, it contains the spermatic cord and in females, round ligament of the uterus. The borders of the inguinal uh, canal, the roof superior border is uh, formed by the internal oblique muscle and transversus abdominis muscles. The floor inferior inguinal ligament shelving edge of the external oblique and lacunar ligament medially. Posterior wall uh, formed by the transversalis fascia laterally and the conjoint tendon medially. Anterior wall formed by the external oblique aponeurosis and internal oblique muscle laterally. This uh, picture shows the transmission of the anterior abdominal wall, uh, transition of the anterior abdominal wall structures into the uh, spermatic cord. The, the uh, transversalis fascia here, uh, green uh, color, 
uh, will transition with the transition to internal spermatic fascia in the spermatic cord. The transverse abdominal muscle remains, and the internal abdominal oblique muscle uh, transition to cremastric muscle with cremastric fascia, and the external abdominal oblique muscle and superficial abdominal fascia with transition to the external spermatic fascia in the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord is the extension of the abdominal wall into the scrotum. It's contains uh, by the rule of three, three arteries, three nerves, and three other structures. The arteries include the testicular artery, ductus dif uh, difference artery, cremasteric artery. The nerves, uh, genital branch of the geni uh, genitofemoral, cremasteric nerve, sympathetic nerve fibers. Three other structures, ductus difference, pamphiniform uh, plexus, and lymphatic vessels. Now, radiology of the anterior abdominal wall. Plain films, the muscle layer of the anterior abdominal wall are outlined, especially in obese individuals between the subcutaneous fat line and the properitoneal fat line. Clearly seen fat lines indicate the lack of edema in these areas, although in 18% of normal radiographs, the properitoneal line is absent. This plain film shows the uh, internal oblique muscle line fat between the internal oblique muscle and transversus abdominis, and uh, then the transverse abdominis muscle, properitoneal uh, fat line, and extraperitoneal uh, fat layer. Regarding the ultrasound, it is dynamic. The dynamic ultrasound is the key examination for assessing the groin or anterior abdominal wall. Anterior abdominal wall pain. Dynamic components of the examination include valsalva and compression maneuvers and scanning in both supine and upright positions. Dynamic sonography aids in determining hernia type, size, contents, reducibility, and tenderness. This ultrasound of abdomen demonstrates a well-defined uh, lipoma in the anterior abdominal wall. Regarding CT, three muscle layers, external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis, can be seen anterior laterally in cross sections and also the rectus abdominis muscle and its sheath uh, can be seen anterior to the other three uh, muscle layers. This uh, CT showing small mass in relation to the left rectus abdominis muscle, which proved to be endometrium. This is another CT showing bilateral fat containing inguinal herniation. On the right, uh, the, the, on the, right the inferior epigastric vessel course uh, lateral uh, to the hernia representing direct inguinal hernia. While on the left, uh, the uh, inferior epigastric vessels uh, located medial to the hernia representing indirect inguinal hernia. This MRI also showing the anterior abdominal wall muscles, this uh, rectus abdominis, and these are the three flat muscles. Uh, anterior abdominal wall. I don't know if comment. Start or we can Yeah, Regarding the anatomy of the esophagus. The esophagus is a 25 cm long fibromuscular tube. It facilitates the passage of foods, fluids from the pharynx to the stomach under precise nervous regulation. It starts at the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage at level of C6, and it enters the abdominal cavity via the right cross of the diaphragm at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra. It extends to the cardiac orifice of the stomach at level of T11. It consists of muscles that run both longitudinally and circularly. Measurements of the esophagus. Average length of the, of the esophagus is about 25 cm, uh, and it's ranging from 23 to 37 cm, and generally it is uh, longer in males than females. In the newborn, its length is about 8 to 10 cm, 
starting from C4 to C5 and up to T9. Normal wall thickness adequately distended, it's about three millimeter. Incompletely distended, about five millimeter. AP diameter less than 16 millimeters. Lateral diameter less than 24 millimeters. Histology of the uh, esophagus. The mucosa is uh, stratified squamous mucosa, which abruptly changed to the columnar epithelium in the, leo, in the lower esophagus. Then uh, the submucosa, the muscle layer, external layer of the longitudinal muscle and inner layer of circular muscle. The external layer is composed of different muscle types in each third. The superior third uh, has a voluntary striated muscles, the middle third voluntary striated and smooth muscles, the inferior third smooth muscle. The adventitia outer layer of the connective tissue. The very distal in, intra, and intraperitoneal portion of the esophagus covered by C. rosa instead of adventitia. Now here I want to ask a question. What is the effect of the C. rosa being absent in the histology, histological structure of the esophagus? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I will, I will answer it. Uh, uh, this result in rapid spread of the tumors, the, C, the cirrhosa, uh, will prevent uh, this uh, to be occur, while absent of cirrhosis result in rapid uh, spread of the uh, tumors of the esophagus. The esophagus is divided into three anatomical parts. First, the cervical part, it's about 4 cm, continuous with the hypopharynx, commences at the lower border of the cricoid uh, cartilage at level of C6, or cricopharyngeus muscle. Then the thoracic part, it's about 20 cm, from starting from the superior th uh, thoracic aperture at level of T1 to the esophageal hiatus at the T10 uh, uh, level in the diaphragm, which covers the inferior thoracic aperture. The abdominal part is about one to two cm, uh, starting from the esophageal hiatus and is continuous with the cardia of the stomach at the gastroesophageal junction. Now the relations of the uh, parts of the esophagus. The cervical part, anteriorly it is, uh, there is, this is the, cer uh, the, the cervical uh, esophagus. Anteriorly there is a trachea and the recurrent laryngeal nerves. Posteriorly the vertebral column, C6 and C7. Laterally the uh, thyroid lobes and carotid sheaths. Thoracic part relations, anteriorly the trachea uh, and uh, left recurrent laryngeal nerve, posteriorly a thora uh, and uh, anteriorly trachea left recurrent laryngeal nerve and left main bronchus, pericardium, posteriorly thoracic vertebral bodies, thoracic duct, azygous veins, descending aorta. From the right, there's the pleura, terminal part of the azygous vein, and from the left, subclavian artery, aortic arch, thoracic duct, and pleura. Relations of the abdominal part, anteriorly, the anterior gastric plexus, which is branch of the uh, left vagus nerve, and the posterior surface of the left lobe of the liver. Posteriorly, posterior gastric plexus, branch of the right vagus nerve, and the left crust of the diaphragm. Physiological constrictions of the esophagus. The anatomical relations of the esophagus gives rise, give rise to four physiological constrictions in its lumen. It is these areas where food, foreign objects are most likely to become impacted. They can be remembered using the acronym ABCD. A, 
the aorta, uh, the arch of aorta. Here there is the uh, the aortic construction. B bronchus left main stem. C the cricoid uh, cartilage. D the diaphragmatic hiatus. Regarding the esophageal sphincters, there are two sphincters in the esophagus, known as the upper and lower esophageal sphincters. Upper esophageal sphincter is an anatomical sphincter, striated muscle sphincter at the junction between the pharynx and esophagus. It is produced by the cricopharyngeus muscle. Normally, it is constricted to prevent the entrance of air into the esophagus. The lower esophageal sphincter is a Functional, not anatomical sphincter. It is located at the gastroesophageal junction. During esophageal peristalsis, the sphincter is relaxed to allow food to enter the stomach. Otherwise, at rest, the function of this sphincter is to prevent the reflux of acidic gastric contents into the esophagus. This uh, figure shows uh, the lower esophageal sphincter when it is closed and when it is opened. Uh, this is the inferior esophageal sphincter, uh, radiological, it's called mus uh, uh, composed of a muscular ring, contractile ring, and it's called a ring. This is the ampulla. Uh, it's a dilated part and should not be considered to be a, 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 a hernia or a pathological in barium uh, films. And uh, this is the uh, squamocolumnar junction, which is a mucosal ring. Uh, and it's called Shasky or Beering. Regarding the vasculature of the uh, esophagus, upper third uh, is supplied by the inferior thyroid artery, and the middle third by branch from the thoracic aorta, the lower third by the left uh, gastric artery. Venous drainage, the upper third drains into the inferior thyroid veins, the middle third into the azygous veins, the lower third into the left gastric vein, which is a tributary of the portal vein. Regarding the innervation, the esophagus is innervated by esophageal plexus, which is formed by combination of the parasympathetic vagal trunks and sympathetic fibers from the cervical and thoracic sympathetic trunk. Lymphatics, the lymphatic drainage of the esophagus is divided into superior third, which is uh, drained by the deep cervical lymph nodes, middle third uh, drained by superior and posterior mediastinal nodes, lower third drained by the left gastric and celiac nodes. Imaging modalities of the esophagus, we have the plain radiography, contrast swallow, ultrasonography, CT, MRI, PET scan and radionuclide scan. Plain radiography, plain chest X-ray is not modality uh, for imaging normal esophagus. However, it may give a clue regarding perforation, foreign bodies, achalasia, and etc. This plain film, lateral plain film, shows the cervical uh, part of the esophagus, and there is a foreign body impacted in the uh, cervical esophagus. This is zoomed uh, image of the same patient. This is a linear uh, opacity located anterior to the uh, C5 and C6 vertebral, uh, vertebra. Regarding contrast solo, is the main radiological method of assessing the esophagus. The study is often modified to suit the history and symptoms of the individual patient but it is often useful to evaluate the entire pathway from the lips to the gastric fundus. It can be performed as a single or double contrast study. Single contrast study, we can use barium sulfate, gastrographene, gastromero. Uh, gastrographene should not be used for the investigation of a tracheoesophageal fistula or when aspiration is a possibility, while barium should not be used if perforation is suspected. Double contrast study, this is done by using gas forming crystals and barium contrast, which distend the esophagus and coat the mucosa. Positions during swallowing, we have the erect prone and supine positions. Medications, uh, bascoban or glucagon for hypotonia for longer retention. This should not be used for assessment of uh, mot motility disorders. Positions, right anterior oblique, left anterior oblique, frontal, lateral. 
Motility disorders should be done uh, in prompt swallow. These are barium uh, swallow films. This is uh, anterior cervical uh, and part from the thoracic part uh, of the esophagus. This is lateral view, and this is uh, oblique view. This is a video uh, showing uh, barium swallow. under fluoroscopic control. This double contrast uh, barium study showing uh, the lower esophagus, uh, showing the feline uh, esophagus, which is uh, caused by gastroesophageal, chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease. And this is a visual structure, uh, structure due to uh, ingestion of caustic material. This is a video showing uh, gastroesophageal reflux. Then, uh, regarding the ultrason uh, ultrasonography of the esophagus, uh, the cervical esophagus can be seen posteriorly, posterior to the left lobe of thyroid in routine neck ultrasound examination uh, by using linear probe 7.5 to 10 uh, megahertz. Gastroesophageal junction also can be visualized in transabdominal sonography by using curvilinear probe. Endoscopic ultrasonography evolved as the imaging modality of choice for entire esophagus. It helps in visualizing all layers of the esophagus, thus perfect in tumor staging, which is superior to the CT. And it helps in taking needle biopsy of suspected growth and suspicious surrounding lymph nodes. Uh, there are standard uh, uh, endoscopic ultrasound and uh, probe combined endoscopy with ultrasonography uh, using 7.5 to 12 megahertz frequency. This picture of uh, endoscopic ultrasound showing uh, the layers uh, of the esophagus. The first layer results from the echo rebound from the surface of the mucosa and is hyperechoic. The second layer corresponds to the mucosa and muscularis mucosa and appears as a thick dark band. The third layer is hyperechoic and corresponds to the uh, submucosa. And the fourth layer is further dark band produced by the muscularis properia. The fifth layer hyperechoic and produced by the junction of the muscularis propria and adventitia or cirrhosa in the lower the most uh, distal part of the esophagus. Disruption of uh, the tissue planes delineated by uh, these echos is vital to the diagnosis and staging of uh, gastrointestinal tract cancer. This ultrasound uh, of the neck uh, showing the esophagus, cervical esophagus in the transverse section. And this is uh, in the longitudinal section. Uh, this is gastroesophageal junction, uh, longitudinal section. This is also a cervical esophagus. Here we, uh, we note that uh, the esophageal wall is uh, thickened. Uh, here there is a foreign body impact in the cervical esophagus, and this is posterior acoustic shadowing. This on the longitudinal section uh, showing the foreign body, a linear ecogenic uh, focus with posterior acoustic uh, shadowing. Regarding CT scan, the esophagus may also be imaged by CT. On cross section, its relationship to the other structures of the thorax is appreciated. Its visualization is improved if it contains air when uh, collapse, it is seen as a narrow, thin-walled structure in the posterior mediastinum. 
Appreciation of the areas in which uh, air containing lung is adjacent to the esophagus provides an understanding of the mediastinal lines seen on the frontal chest radiograph. High density or positive oral contrast material swallowed directly before CT is helpful in delineating the esophageal lumen. Intravenous contrast administered at a rate of two to four millimeter uh, per second. Scanning is performed during the portal venous phase. Slice thickness should be no more than five millimeter throughout the chest. In patients with suspected esophageal varices, water is used as a negative contrast agent combined with intravenous contrast. Multiplanar reformatted images may also be helpful, particularly in the staging of esophageal cancer. CT has advantage over MRI in detecting lymph nodes with more accuracy. This is sagittal and uh, coronal CT showing the uh, parts or anatomical parts of the esophagus. Regarding MRI, the advent of fast breath hold MR sequences has increased the utility of MR in evaluating uh, of the GI tract, but there is still the role of M MR imaging in evaluation of the esophagus is limited. Coverage of the entire esophagus in a single breath hold sequence remains problematic. Regarding P PET CT, for picking metastasis and extent of spread of malignancy within the esophagus, this image showing uh, the, uh, the cancer here. And uh, regarding the nuclear medicine, uh, the prime role uh, for assessing esophageal motility disorders and the reflux disease, especially in young children. This image shows radioplast scintigraphy showing a positive scan for Barrett's esophagus. Conclusion. First, uh, plain films, it has no or limited role in evaluating esophagus. The barium swallow is most useful modality in evaluating esophageal disorders. Normal variants in barium swallow should not be misinterpreted. The endoscopic ultrasound imaging modality of choice for tumor staging of esophageal cancer and to check extraluminal extension. CT scan imaging modality for evaluation uh, for evaluating extraluminal disease and nodal disease in carcinoma. MRI has limited role in evaluating esophageal disease. Radionuclide scan useful in motility disorders. Thank you for listening. So I've come in as a السنة دي بالكويت ياسمين ياسمين فلاح موجودة؟ ممتاز أي كوزا؟ نعم ميوكوزا هدي الكريم بي صباح الخير عمو مشكلة على اسمي كوزا بي مشكلة على اسمي كوزا كل شيء رعد نعم أستاذ سب ميوكوزا Mm -hmm. Marwan E. Ustad, Mosclas Propy. Mosclas Propy. Mortavarad E. <coughs> External, external, external media muscle. Sean, external oblique muscle. Hamad Hassan, Hamad Hassan. No, I'm start. This is internal oblique muscle. Internal oblique muscle. For pound, Hamad Hassan. No, I'm start. Transversus abdominis. جيد. فرح زهير. نعم أستاذ. دي عندنا اللاين قلبة. 
ليني قلبة ليني قلبة عماد ايه ايون استاذ ركز هدول الناس ما صار ركز هدول الناس ما صار ممتاز